Welcome back. 2023 NBA Draft Player Profiles here with the Field of 68. My name is Greg Waddell, and I am joined by the insufferable national champion, Rob Doster. Why do I say insufferable? Because we're talking about a few of his boys today, starting with the one and only Andre Jackson, glue guy extraordinaire. That's what I've called him throughout the college basketball season. I'm very excited to see if Rob believes this will translate up to the NBA level. Six points per game, six rebounds per game, five assists per game, 43% from the floor. The shooting numbers are a little dicey for a quote unquote hopeful NBA glue guy, Rob. Do you think that Andre Jackson's all around winning little things game? will actually be impactful for an NBA organization. Uh, I do. I do very much so. I think that he is the best connective piece that you can find in this draft. Like He's not a guy that's going to be a superstar. He's not someone that's going to come in and average 18 points a game. He's not somebody that's going to come in and probably ever shoot better than like 33% from beyond the arc. What he is is one of the highest IQ players that you're going to find, especially on the defensive side of the ball. What he is is one of the best athletes that you're going to find, especially on the defensive side of the ball. He is somewhere between like a free safety um, and like a middle linebacker. He is exceptionally smart when it comes to being able to break up what other teams are doing. He's able to read passing lanes. He's absolutely electric in transition. Uh, he is, though, for my money, finding a way to utilize him while he was such a liability on the offensive end of the floor because of his shooting, was what turned UConn from the team that struggled in January to the team that just steamrolled everybody in February and March and into the, the NCAA tournament title game in April. Um, we called him on the Top Dogs podcast, Andre fucking Jackson, because when he <laughs> plays like AFJ, he is as impactful as anybody that you're going to find. Um, you're not using a lottery pick on him. Uh, he is one of these guys where you take him in the 26 to 30 range or early in the second round where you get him at a pretty cheap price and you know that you are a good enough team where you just need a guy that can come in and do a job for you for 15 minutes a game. He is that. I think, and tell me if this is crazy, there are some shades of Draymond Green in him in the sense Whoa. that he's you're not bringing him in to be a guy that's going to be the superstar. But if you put good pieces around him, he elevates the play. He, now, I'm not, I don't think he's going to be at that same level, right? Like Draymond Green is a Hall of Famer. Andre Jackson is probably going to cap out as like the fifth starter on a good basketball team. But Andre, the, the Draymond Green's greatest skill was making all of the good players around him just a little bit better to the point where the Golden State Warriors became a dynasty, right? And I think Andre Jackson is the kind of guy you put him on the floor with a team that's a playoff team, and all of a sudden, instead of getting knocked out in like the second round, you got a team that's a threat in the conference finals. I just I think that he is that high of an IQ player. I think he has that much of an impact, and I think in three or four years, we're going to be looking at him as something in the vein of like uh, Warriors, Andre Iguodala to like, the Nuggets, Aaron, like something like that. Just a guy who's not the best player, but who just goes out there and does a good job. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I am really intrigued with where Jackson lands because I think fit arguably matters more with him and his outlook than maybe any other player in the draft because I'm convinced if you throw him on a title contending team right now, and all he has to do is be the fifth offensive option every time he's on the floor, guard his ass off, bring all the intangible shit, the leadership, the communication, the toughness. Like, of course, he has all of that. There's no question with that. If you throw him on, I'm trying, the joke always used to be the Sacramento Kings, right? But now the Kings are a good team. If you throw him on the Houston Rockets and he's their the second Kings, round pick. The Kings actually could use him. Like, they need <laughs> a dude could. that could be a switchable defender around a bunch of guys <laughs> that just go out and get buckets. Like, he actually makes a lot of sense on the Kings. But it's the first time we've ever said that about Sacramento. But, like, let's say he lands on Houston. I, that would be a terrifying land for him. And I would be very concerned about his long term outlook. The thing with Draymond. I like that in, I think, for the, like, why you're going to that comp. I get what you're saying. Like, what he became within Golden State's system became higher than anybody thought he could achieve in the NBA mm -hmm. because uh, of, uh, honestly, he's a basketball genius, right? That's what Draymond is. And I think there are flashes of that with Jackson. 
I keep coming back to that one play he had. You'll probably know the specifics of it, but it was like clock winding down, five seconds left in the first half. He stole a pass that wasn't even intended for him and then kicked it out to the open shooter to hit the three before the, the halftime buzzer. Like He just makes all these little plays nobody else in college basketball did because he sees the game faster and quicker and smarter than anybody else on the floor at all times, and you add the athleticism. There's a lot there to like. What I don't like and where I would draw the line and push back on your Draymond comp is that he had nine games all last season where he scored double digit points. Draymond was the national player of the year in college. And I think honestly, looking back on Draymond's career, people seem to have forgotten. Hold like, on, the hold on. Let me, let me correct play. that real quick. Draymond Green won one of like six national player of the year awards when Anthony Davis was the clear cut national player of the year. Okay. Let's just get to the, let's get I mean, that straight. You, you want you want me to read Draymond's numbers off to you right now? The man was Oh no, he was a stud. Triple he was doubles. he was a monster. He was a triple, monster. Triple doubles in the NCAA tournament, multiple with an S. Andre Jackson scored in double digits once in the national title run. Yeah, I know. Like I the so the I used the the Draymond, I knew I knew people would push back on that. I used the Draymond Green comp because he's the best example of like what what Andre Jackson his role is. But that's also like saying a shooter could be Steph Curry, right? Like it, it's a very clearly a horrible compare. Like I'm not saying Andre Jackson is going to be a Hall of Fame level player. What I'm saying is that like that's that's kind of what you have to envision when you are yeah. drafting a guy in Andre thing. Jackson. Yeah. I get that. Do you think that Jackson has the potential to punch a teammate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just look, wondering. He uh there was a moment this season where he he, uh, he punched a locker. So I think that yes, there is the potential that he might punch a teammate. Um no, but the thing about him is the other reason why I love him is there's no ego with that kid. Right? Yeah. Like he very much understands who he is, what his role is and what his job needs to be at the next level to be able to to succeed. And I think that when it comes to role guys in the NBA, like accepting who you are is like 90% of the battle. You know what I mean? Like, and I think he he really understands what he does great and how that's going to make him survive at the NBA level. I just, I, I just, I he's one of these guys where you kind of bet on the kid, right? I think that the jump shot will get to the point where it's good enough that he's going to be able to, to like, he's never going to be a guy like making pull ups off the dribble, right? Like, he's never going to be someone that's like crossing you over, stepping back and making twenty eight footers over and over again. That's just not what he's going to be. He's got to be good enough where when teams, you know, they call it dorking, right? Dare the dork to shoot. When teams dare him to shoot, like what Aaron Gordon had to deal with a little bit in the in the NBA Finals, like what teams did to him in January, when they dare him to shoot and they just don't guard him, he's got to make enough where you can't defend him that way. And that's basically like shoot 33% on wide open threes. And I yeah. think that that might be enough, but... um also, the one, the other thing that I'll add is like if you're drafting him at the end of the first round, like what is the, um, what's the actual cost of that, right? Like what is what is what is the risk that you're taking? There's really no risk, and I think you're getting a very upside, uh, very high upside connective piece that can step in and contribute right away from day one. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one, and man, that could not be more true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional bases for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.
Yeah. So I have a couple follow-up questions for you, and then I'll throw a comp at you two before we wrap this. Um, the the point about okay, it's a low risk move for a team at the end of the first round. If uh, let's go back to the Warriors, because that's a, like the ultimate franchise that likes to swing for the fences with these low risk late round first round picks, right? Um, uh, Imani Bates, totally different in every way than Andre Jackson. But I've heard his name thrown around as like, oh, for a winning franchise, that's a low risk move. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You're already a championship contender. If it does work, then you stumbled into, you know, a guy who has really high ceiling as a scorer in the NBA. Do you think it makes more sense for a contender to take that swing on a potential guy like Imani Bates, whose ceiling is super high, but his floor is so low versus Andre Jackson, who I feel like the floor is significantly higher here. It's just, he's never going to be a superstar in the NBA, no matter how successful he is. I think it depends on which organization you are, if that makes sense. So for example, somebody like the Miami Heat, who basically have a culture where uh, a certain level of work is expected and you have a superstar that's all built around that, you know, I don't know how much longer Jimmy Butler is going to be able to play at this level because he's he's getting up there. What is he, like 31, 32, right? So maybe two, three years left in this, like, elite peak window that he has. If you want to take someone like an Imani Bates and put him into that culture, I think that that is something that would be great for Imani, right? Whereas I don't know if that's necessarily what you want to do if you are trying to draft Andre Jackson. you got enough guys that are kind of like Andre Jackson on the heat. Whereas... Someone like the Kings, someone like the Phoenix Suns that just need these guys that can hold it together with all of these other dudes that are already at that level of talent. I think it makes a lot more sense to look at Andre. Jet. Like you said, I think you said this at the beginning, like fit is going to matter for him more than just about anything else. And if he ends up at the right organization with the right guys around him, I I, I see him. I see him thriving like those th those those big wings that can guard. I legitimately think Andre Jackson guard one through four. Maybe if he puts on a little bit weight, I think he's long enough to guard some fives, depending on who you not Nikola Jokic, but like in different in different lineups. I think that he might be able to guard fives at some point. Uh I think guys like that that can just come in there and do a job are are what NBA teams are looking for to fill out their roster. He's not going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the depth chart, but when you're just kind of plug in pieces that make everything else come together, when you're not trying to spend a hundred million dollars on a player, I think he's worth the risk. So what I'm about to say applies to probably every single player in this draft. It may sound stupid to say out loud, but I would love to see him land on a team that has a super duper star in the NBA, because I think he is the type of guy IQ wise with all the intangible things that he does, that he becomes like he reaches his 10 out of 10 value. If you pair him with a guy who is already the engine of an offense that is transcendent, that like I would love to see him paired with Jokic. I think that would be absurd. The little smart crevices he would find in the defense and ways he would help the other guys in the floor get open and play off of Nikola Jokic would be incredible. I would love to see him play off of Giannis maybe even a Jason Tatum. Whereas if you put him on a team, like going back to the Kings, we keep throwing them out. I still like him. I think he would help like take that next step forward culture wise, but I don't know that all the little things he does would be maximized the same way they would be next to a star. Like I said, you can probably say that about everybody, but with Jackson, it's even more because of what his ceiling is with all of those little things. Um, I guess 100% yeah, right about Jokic, by the way, with like with Andre's ability to cut, and his yeah. ability to catch above the rim. <laughs> Do you know how many wide open ducks he's going to get just from Jokic throwing those like the little no look behind the over the shoulder passes? A million yeah. of them. It and, would be stupid. Yeah, and and one thing I will add, Andre Jackson's projected in that like twenty five to forty five range. Who just went up and bought a couple of uh, second round picks? The Nuggets did in this year's draft. I'm just saying, maybe Seriously. you could be GM of Denver one day. It's not the craziest thing in the world. It's not well, the dumbest thing you've ever said, Greg. If you're the GM of Denver, let me play full GM here. I'm going to go GM of the Boston Celtics, Rob. I'm calling Portland immediately. Jalen Brown for three and Anthony Simons. And then I'm taking Andre Jackson later in the draft. You're telling me a team, Scoot Henderson, Simons, Jason Tatum, and Andre Jackson isn't all of a sudden a title team beyond what you had with Tatum and Brown? Phone it in, folks. I would love to see that fit. Um, all right. I never threw my comp at you, so let me spitball extremely quickly here. You see any Kyle Anderson in Andre Jackson? 
That's a basketball genius who does the little things. Yes. I think that that is, um, that is kind of the, the role that you would imagine, like the impact that he would have on a team. Now, Kyle Anderson, his nickname is Slow Mo. That's Andre Jackson, obvious. like Andre Jackson, is <laughs> like if you gave uh, a rabbit four loco, like that's kind of how he operates when he's on a basketball court. So, like in terms of the way that they play and how they'll get the job done, it's completely different. But if you want like an idea and a concept of just like how you plug somebody in and how it kind of makes everything else work, even when they're not the best player, like that is that makes sense. And I get it. Yeah. That's kind of the role that he would play. He'd get the job done very, very, very differently, though. You yeah, like that rabbit on four loco? I absolutely love that. I was going to say nobody calls Kyle Anderson Kyle fucking Anderson. So, <laughs> nobody uh, does. There we are. call him Kyle <laughs> Anderson. I'm going to need that one clip, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> shout, shout out to Trevor. We're going to need that segment. All right. Uh, wishing Andre Jackson the best, of course. Wishing you the best. That feels weird to say, Rob. But I feel like if Andre Jackson wins, you win by default. So uh, good luck with that. Hey, by the way, we're going to be doing a live NBA mock draft Thursday, June 15th, 7 p.m. we got some of the best in the business jumping on to go through every single pick in the first round of the NBA draft. Uh, we're very excited for that. That'll be on the Field of 68 YouTube channel. We also have like 100 NBA draft player profiles, videos just like this for every single big prospect in this draft class. Go find those on the YouTube channel. For Rob Doster, my name is Greg Waddell. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.